All right, hello everyone. My name is Patrick Crawford. I'm with Theory and a few others, although this presentation is with CG Cookie. I'm a developer mostly doing Blender add-on work. And what I want to talk to you about today is updating analytics and related concepts. I have to know I have a short presentation, a long presentation. I'm going to use the short one to respect the time. Uh, but if you go to the bit.ly link, there is more content there. And eventually I'll probably do a longer video topic on the, the area. But yes, I'm here to talk about analytics and what it plays and what it means both to developers as well as to artists. Um, so, and I worked with uh, Jonathan and a few others, the CG Cookie crew, crew to uh, kind of work through these items and hopefully take some of this more into reality. So last year, in the same, like a year ago exactly, we demoed the first use of the add-on updater module. This is a module that developers can include inside of their add-ons to actually do native updating inside of Blender. And it was received very well. And since then, a number of different add-ons have used it, including RetopaFlow as sort of the pioneer, as well as others. So it's good to see this being more and more adopted. But one thing they wanted to do after that is I uh, really understand what is, what is the impact of being able to have your users easily update. And the obvious answer to that is they update sooner. More people are using your latest software sooner. They're notified of it and they can choose to actually use the latest information. And as a sort of proof to really see the effect of this, uh, another add-on I developed called MC Prep. Uh, I implement a very basic rudimentary sort of uh, analytics sort of tracking system all user privacy you know, permitting, and people accept, opt in, all those sort of good things. But I was able to see the actual effects of having update notifications you know, integrated. And I could see that users within a month of a release or even sooner, 80% of users are already using the latest software, which is very powerful. It's a lot better than a lot of other platforms. If you're an Android user, it's like the 50% of the market, so like two years or a four year old releases, something crazy like that. So being able to know that you actually have an effect of the changes you make for your code is really helpful. This begs another question. What other things can you learn about your users, the way your software is being used and how you can improve it? I looked at this example and saw, yes, it's a very obvious result that people update sooner to the latest software if you include updating software capabilities. Uh, but what other things can I find? And one of the things I noticed was in tracking or knowing just when an operator is used, basically a trigger that someone pressed a button. I found that the vast majority of my users were using this one operator. And yet it was the thing that I was spending the least amount of my time as a developer on it. I was spending 90% of my time building out those last two features there, which are pretty advanced, they're intricate, but perhaps they're maybe a little more niche. But regardless, I can see here that that's not who is really using the add-on. And that can give me a lot of insights as a developer that allow me to spend my time better, know what my users are really doing. And you can do surveys and all these things, those help, there's an indicative, but when you have large data like this, it actually allows you to make the proper decisions to really understand what you need to do as a developer, build the proper workflows. And this, this graph itself is actually what has changed my roadmap for the future for this product, building more of a workflow and trying to design to cater to the way that the users are actually using the add-on. And so again, with this base implementation in place, I'm kind of hoping to work forward and make it so that other developers can kind of utilize a sort of analytics platform in a safe and responsible manner. I'll leave this slide up there, just kind of you know describe what that means abstractly. But uh, I'll just say that, again, there's more on this topic here, the bit links there. And it's something I'm looking forward to helping implement and make uh, widely available for developers in the future so that we really bridge the gap between what you as a developer think your users need and what they actually need in the way they're using it to make better software and make everyone's life easier. Thank you. Woo.